What's up, everybody? It's your guy, favorite teacher's favorite teacher, Mr. Singleton, reporting to you live from the classroom. Now, this year, we're going to be engaging in some spectacular learning. And here's how. I know what you're worried about. Man, I chose to be on hybrid, or I chose to be a virtual learner, and I'm at the house. I hope to goodness that I don't end up like one of these. Not to worry, ladies and gentlemen, we have the appropriate plan for you that's going to work out this season, and it's called Microsoft Teams, baby. Oh! Today, I'll be working with you guys on giving you a heads up tutorial on how to use the system. We're going to cover how to use your student email to log in, how to download the app on your laptop device or your cell phone. We'll also be covering how to find your assignments, where to look for your classes, how to collaborate not only with your teacher, but as well as your fellow students while you're at home or in the hybrid program. We'll also be covering some extra gems that'll make you ultimately successful. So stay tuned, stick around, and we're gonna have a great time. Some people remember, and some people forget. If you find yourself looking like this, uh, what is Teams? Uh, I don't like know what that is. I need a little bit of assistance. Not to worry. Here's a brief introduction from our academic coach, Ms. Owens, letting you know what Microsoft Teams is. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joanne Owens. I'm instructional coach here at Estill Middle School. Today, I'd like to introduce you to Microsoft Teams, the learning platform that we'll be using for our virtual and hybrid students as we start to begin our 2020-21 school year. Microsoft Teams will allow our students and teachers to feel like they're all in the classroom together even though they may be far apart. They'll be able to collaborate, turn in assignments, give feedback to one another, and see one another right through their screens. Oh, raggy. Sixth graders need to use the login information received when we first started virtual learning during the spring of 2020. This information was sent out to your parents and it includes a district email and password. 7th and 8th graders are able to use the information received from the school also during the pandemic in the spring of 2020. If you're having trouble accessing your information, simply give a call to our school at 625-5200 or contact the district office. We look forward to working with you, learning with you, and getting our feet started on the ground running for an exceptional 2020-21 school year, whether it's virtual or in the classroom. We hope to see you soon. All right, so now that you had the opportunity to utilize your student email to log in online to Microsoft Teams, as well as download the application on your laptop and smartphone, Let's talk about how you go about utilizing the system from a student's perspective. Oh, uh-uh, where you going there? Uh-uh. Hey, guys. Before we actually dive deep into your Microsoft Teams experience, let's take a step back to first talk about how we actually go about logging in. It starts with understanding what your student email is for. For example, the first thing you definitely want to do once you get your student email and your password, is find your Hampton County School District 2 website. When you get there, you have to locate the prompt that says Office 365. When you click on it, you'll be taken to the intro page, which says Welcome to Office. You can sign in or you can get Office. Since we already have accounts, let's just sign in. Clicking this button, you'll be set to the pick account section. Now, most of you will have a blank account. I already have one, but I need to use one to show you. So let's do this. If you were a student, you would use your email address that was given at hampton2.k12.sc.us, then hit next. Once it slides through, you're prompted with a password. The password that is given to you should be the one that you use. Once you access, ow, bubbly, bubbly. Good evening, Andre. You're in here, and you now have access to being able to operate Microsoft Office from the email, your Word, Excel, PowerPoint, or Outlook devices, your OneDrive, your OneNote, SharePoint, 
and dun, 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 teams. When you click on the teams button, right, you will ultimately be prompted by an interesting little message. They should ask you whether you want to use it on the web or open it up in an application. Once you do that, you just simply sign in again. And you're definitely within your team, Microsoft Teams page. Yep, yep. Hooray! Log into your Microsoft team and open up the app is your team section. This can be considered your section where all of your classes are stored. What you really want to do is make sure that you log into each class at the appropriate time as it is scheduled for you. So when you get your schedule in the mail and you see, for example, you have my class at 730, make sure that you try to log in a little bit earlier, like 720. Be waiting in the wait room, already ready to go. Like you just the man or something, or that girl or something. That's what we're looking for. Once you click on, you'll be introduced to your post section. The post section is where you'll find all of your information for not only just that day, but generally for the week. You'll see posts that come from your teacher, whether that be assignments, inspirational, motivational messages, or just the tone of asking questions. You'll also see areas of student feedback where you and as well as your peers have the opportunity to comment. Also in your post section, you'll be able to see assignments that have been posted and given out by your teacher. If there was anything recorded, it will also show up in your post section. And even more importantly, when you hop into your post section, you'll see whether or not you need to join a meeting. Make sure you always check your post section first, as it generally dictates what you'll end up doing throughout the course of that day. The next section that you want to pay attention to is your file section. Your file section is where your teachers will be utilizing resources that help you with your assignments. Most of the time, your teachers are extremely organized, so we'll try to categorize them. In my class, they'll be categorized as class materials, digital anchor charts, videos, and links. By clicking on the internal folders, you have access to the materials that your teacher uploads to help support you with your academic endeavors. When it comes down to classification or organizing things such as your notes or assignments, reading logs, etc., you can utilize your class notebook. Your class notebooks are set up and created by your teachers and are generally based on your student email as well. For my class, you'll be utilizing three different areas of your class notebook. That'll be your collaboration space, to which you can utilize to speak, collaborate with your fellow peers. Everyone in the class shares, organizes, and is able to collaborate. You also have access to a content library. This is generally like a read only space where the teacher normally will share like handouts or like printed notes if they choose to do so. And then of course you have your notebook, which will be designed in multiple sections based on the content area and your teacher. For example, in my class, this student's notebook is rearranged into class notes, extras, independent reading for your independent reading logs, independent writing for your daily writing logs, as well as vocabulary section for all vocabulary assignments and or vocabulary handouts. You can definitely utilize your class notebook this series to not only organize everything that you do online, but keep a paper trail that you can utilize when you're trying to stay on track or find something that you might have thought that you misplaced or might have thought that you didn't complete. The next section, your most important section, is your assignments. In this section, your teachers will automatically post the assignment that goes for the course of that day or the course of that week. The advantage that you have using this section is that you automatically see what the assignment is, when it was scheduled, when it was due, and how much points it's worth. By clicking on the assignment, you automatically have access to the assignment's description 
as well as any resource materials that were posted by your teacher to help assist with that. You also have a section at the bottom where you can add work yourself. So for example, if your teacher adds a resource and then challenges you to find a resource, hint, hint, things that we do in Singleton's class, you can utilize this section to add anything, any resource that you have or any comments that you have written about the resources that were given. Once you complete the assignment, simply click the turn in button and a notification will be sent to your teacher, letting them know that you're ready to be graded. Once they've graded your assignment and sent it back to you, you'll receive a notification to with which you can simply come to your grade section, click on it, and you'll be noted by this page, which shows the due date, the assignment itself, the status, whether it was viewed or not by your teacher or graded, and the point total that you got. Also, by being able to, once the, once, just a side note, Jim, once the assignment has been graded and feedback has been given, all you really need to do is click on the assignment to see what your teacher or what kind of feedback your teacher posted on your work. Other cool gems. Looking at this side section here, you have the ability, Microsoft Teams gives you the ability to collaborate with not only your teacher, but your peers in what we like to call the chat room. In the chat room, not only does your teacher, but you yourself have the opportunity to create different channels that allow you to speak to different people, whether that be separately or within groups. Here you see examples of how we utilized it throughout the course of March leading towards the end of school year. We have a meeting room, a particular chat divulged for the year class period. You also have the ability to speak to the class. We named ours the seventh grade coronavirus break club, where we talked to all of our students. You also have a section where you can open up channels and speak directly to your classmates individually. And you also have the ability to establish groups, for example. You can set up a group where you and your fellow peers and just your class or your fellow peers and just your team assignment or fellow peers in a group project can speak with each other individually. And of course, you can even start a channel where you can conference with all of your teachers at the same time as an individual. You can definitely utilize the chat section any given time throughout the course of the year to ensure that you stay in constant communication with your teacher, which is, as we know, is one of our keys to academic success. You can also use the side tabs to look at your assignments for all of your classes at the same time, simply by clicking on assignments and choosing the section or class that you're in. Let's see if we can find it. See if we can find my class. See if we can find my class. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Ah, sings class. So once you click next, bam, you see the assignment. Now, I know you're also wondering, well, I like to be professional and responsible in communicating with my teacher. How can I set up a meeting with them? No problem. <laughs> Silly Billy. All you got to do is go to your calendar section. When you head to your calendar section, it gives you the dates by month, which allow you to set up individual meetings. Now, you don't just have to set up meetings with your teachers. You can also set up meetings with your fellow peers. But in order to do that, you would simply come to a date that you want to set a meeting. Let's go for Friday and let's go for two o'clock is the time frame. We simply click on. And we're introduced to our schedule meeting page. Now, as you see at the top, it says new meeting. Cool thing about it is you can add your own title. It also gives you the ability to add required attendees. So not only the cool thing about teams guys is that people can join your meeting if they hear about your meeting, but you can also require people or send notifications. And this is where you'll send those notifications. So if you want to have a meeting with Ms. Lennon, you simply type in Ms. Lennon's name and her name pops up through the directory. Once you place her name on there, 
She will now receive a notification letting her know that you would like to meet at the scheduled time that you requested, which I believe would be 2.30-ish. 2 o'clock to 2.30-ish. Cool. Now, you can also designate so that these meetings repeat. So say you have a scheduled time that you want to weekly meet with your teacher for a little outside tutoring or constant communication through via yourself or your parents. You can set this as a reoccurring meeting. Which can happen every weekday. Which is every day it could be a daily occurrence, a weekly occurrence, a monthly occurrence or even a yearly occurrence. You can even customize the occurrence as to fit your designated needs. They also give you some perks like adding a channel or adding a location. Adding a channel just simply means adding a separate um, messaging section that is separate from the one that's already been. Adding a location is just like on Facebook. You're just marking a location. And of course, you have an area of extra box where you can put a description of what the meeting will be about and what you plan or your expectations or expected roles within the meeting. If you look at your more section, oops. Hmm, looking into your more section, you have the ability to actually download extra apps that are already grafted into the system that'll help you with your assignments. This year in my class, I would definitely suggest utilizing applications such as Poly and Stream as we'll be using both to collaborate as well as work on our PBL projects this year. There are also more apps that you can download, which your teachers will discuss with you individually. Applications such as YouTube, Metal Gum on your Microsoft Stream, Freehand, Kahoot, Classic. Who doesn't love a good Kahoot game? Pair Deck, which we definitely use. Ooh, I'm really getting into this Zoho projects. I'll tell you more about that later, though. Task list for those who want to be more organized. Listy, and the list goes on and on. Ultimately, guys, I really and truly believe that your academic success is on the path to greatness. And it's definitely due to our implementation of Microsoft Teams and how we'll be utilizing this year to make sure that you have the best academic experience of your life. All right. I hope you found this tutorial quite easy, easy to understand, easy to relate to, and feel a lot more confident about being able to use the system. If not, don't worry. We've got a whole year to figure this out. We're going to do this together. Remember, guys, stay strong. And remember, most importantly, we're a team here at Estill Middle School. We're together. Everyone achieves more. Have a good one.